Uh, NVIDIA shares are up about 4%. Uh, Jim, what's the latest you've been picking up from well, uh, your many conversations, both on air and off air, with many of the I people who've attended Dreamforce this week and just been, been you know, who you've seen in the, uh, in the uh, uh, San Francisco area? Well, I think that we can listen to what Lisa Sue has to say from AMD. What she told me was, look, NVIDIA's unassailable lead, but there's room for two because there is so much business. The demand I just keep getting is more and more and more. And the big, the big joke out here is that some people really do have Blackwell, and it's going to be Elon Musk or Mark Zuckerberg. Because remember, last week, Jensen Wong's had just become very emotional. Who gets his chips? I've not seen anything like this, David. It's like they're scalping him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's bad. He's, he's had to deal with scalping before. But yeah, most people just say that Jensen is AI. We're waiting for others to kind of join his orb, but nobody has. That stock collapsed last night. It collapsed. It went from 15 to 13 as if it was some sort of small cap. Margarine, you know, margarine, a knife through margarine. Oh, yeah, look at that. And now it's higher. Yeah. And obviously we've yeah. got an S&P. Carl, that's a new new record, right? On the S&P? Yeah. yeah. This is an all-time high. And I think probably for the Dow as well, right? About 42K. The one to watch is NVIDIA. That was up three and a half. Now it's up five. There was nothing wrong with NVIDIA. Uh, but except for the fact that the long knives has been out for it because people think that Jensen can't possibly maintain the strength. Um, so we're trying it. I'm, I have my eye on NVIDIA. Uh, it's not yet made a higher, uh, you know, a, a higher high than the prior peak. So it's definitely still in this sideways mode. So I guess I'm going to reserve judgment as to whether this is, you know, a change in character of this market that's been moving away from tech until we get a few more days of follow through. Elsewhere, NVIDIA up another 5% and now up about 10% from just a couple weeks ago. The stock's rebound has coincided with NVIDIA CEO Jensen Wong's uh, media blitz, recently touting the promise of accelerated computing at a number of conferences just this week at Dreamforce with Salesforce CEO Mark Benioff. All right, I hope you're all enjoying this nice green day today. The S&P finished the day up 1.7%. NVIDIA finished the day up nearly 4%. And Tesla finished the day up more than 7.3%. Today was a very nice day in the markets following yesterday's FOMC meeting. As for Tesla, we finally have a clean break and close above this supply zone that we've been battling with for over a week. This is very, very encouraging to see. And that old supply zone is now null and void. Tesla has multiple positive tailwinds right now. Interest rates are coming down, which is of course great for the entire market. But it is especially great for Tesla because Tesla is interested rate sensitive. Additionally, we have Tesla's upcoming RoboTaxi event that is scheduled for October 10th. Now, the next thing I'll be watching for in the days ahead is a close of this gap on the daily time frame. We came very close to closing the gap today, but barely missed it. And right after Tesla closes that gap, it will be up against yet another supply zone. Now, as long as the rest of the market simply remains calm between now and October 10th, then I think Tesla is likely to break above the supply zone and then go on to retest the relative high of $271 per share. I'm not saying this is going to happen right away. It will likely take a number of days. But as long as the rest of the market simply remains calm, then I think a retest of $271 per share is very likely to happen sometime between now and the event on October 10th. Now let's talk about NVIDIA. So we once again are back above the 50 MA on the daily time frame. Right now I want to wait one or two more trading days and see what happens with the rest of the market before making any definitive calls. The market got a 50 BP rate cut yesterday and more cuts are on the way later this year. This is good news for markets. However, the market is trading at all-time highs and we also have an upcoming election in November. So for right now, I want to be patient and cautious regarding NVIDIA in both the short term and medium term. I'll briefly mention what I've said in a lot of recent videos, and that is that attention surrounding NVIDIA and subsequently NVIDIA's share price typically moves in cycles in between earnings reports. This pattern has already happened twice this year, and if the pattern were to repeat itself again, then we could see NVIDIA trade lower into late October slash early November. Please hear me well right now. Even if NVIDIA trades lower into late October slash early November, that does not mean that NVIDIA can't trade higher in the short term if the rest of the market trades higher. If the rest of the market moves higher for another week or two because of rate cuts, then NVIDIA will likely trade higher as well. But once we get toward the end of this month, that's when I would really be cautious until we get past early November. That being said, we do have multiple events coming up at which Jensen Huang is supposed to speak. According to CNBC, Jensen is scheduled to speak in D.C. on September 27th. Then after that, Jensen is scheduled to have a fireside chat in Mumbai on October 24th. And then finally, Jensen is scheduled to speak in Tokyo on November 13th. It will be interesting to see if NVIDIA stock rallies after any of these events like it did after Jensen spoke at Goldman Sachs' recent technology conference. Since we now have a lot of events on the calendar, that makes it more difficult
difficult to predict what NVIDIA stock will do in October. But given the cycle NVIDIA typically moves in, given that October is typically the worst month in the stock market, and given the upcoming election, I think caution is reasonable until we get past early November, but that doesn't mean that NVIDIA can't have some strong green days along the way. Now regarding the long term, I am bullish on the long term future of NVIDIA, and I think the company's brightest days are ahead. Hyperscalers like Amazon Meta Microsoft and Google must invest in AI infrastructure now, or they will be quickly left behind. Blackwell is on the horizon and scheduled to ship in Q4. And Blackwell is an entire platform. It's not just a chip. So at NVIDIA's next earnings report, we should start to see some Blackwell revenue show up in the company's next quarter guidance. Overall, I think NVIDIA still has a very clear runway of growth ahead of it. And I would not be surprised if NVIDIA doubles over the next two years given the company's current growth trajectory and upcoming product cycles. At least that's how I view the situation. With all of that being said, I hope you all have a great day. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts about NVIDIA in the comments below. Please leave a like on this video so more people will see it. And while you're down there, please consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.